When we think about evolution, we usually think about Darwin. Remember though, that Darwin's theory is the theory of evolution by natural selection. From the fossil record, we knew that species evolved. Darwin's insight was that natural selection is an important driver of evolution. However, there are a number of things that can change a population's genetics, and thus the phenotypes that are present in the population over time. And so let's be really clear about what we're talking about here. We're talking about alleles, because alleles are the things that are transmitted from one generation to the next. So a more precise question than how do populations evolve would be what processes change the alleles that are present in a population or their frequencies. And there are actually four different processes that we're going to consider here. The first is random mutation. Mutation is a spontaneous but heritable changes in genes. And mutation introduces new alleles to the gene pool. The second is migration. Remember that a population, at least in our current sense, is a set of interbreeding individuals of the same species. However, if individuals of the same species arrive from another population, they can bring new alleles with them. The third is random genetic drift. In completely randomly mating populations, that very randomness can lead to spontaneous changes in allele frequency. And of course, there's the big fish in the pool, which is natural selection. This is the idea that different genotypes are more or less likely to survive and reproduce. And this breaks the central tenet of Hardy-Weinberg, which is that alleles in the current generation are passed to the next generation at the same frequency. We'll discuss each of these ideas in turn, taking a quantitative look at how these processes affect allele frequencies and their transmission. We'll start with mutation and migration.